مساكم الله بالخير شكرا جميعا لتواجدكم معنا اليوم اتوقع انه هو المجلس ال17 this talk will be in english but i started in arabic welcome everybody uh, i believe this is the 17th cultural majlis and uh, we're very happy to have uh, one of the uh, leading uh, suppose contemporary artists hana uh, malalla uh, with us uh, today from bahrain i believe and uh, to introduce Hana Malallah, I have a personal friend, uh, an individual I respect very much, uh, Mirna Ayad. Uh, Mirna Ayad, who is a Dubai-based art consultant, a cultural strategist, and former editor of Canvas uh, magazine, one of the leading publications uh, on art from the region. And she was also former director of Art Dubai. Uh, Mirna happens to write a monthly column for the National. Uh, the column is titled, Remembering the Artist. And one of the uh, artists that was featured recently uh, was Through the Eyes of Hana Marallah, featured Shakir Hassan Al Saeed. Uh, Hana Marallah, of course, uh, was tutored, uh, mentored, and taught by Shakir Hassan Al Saeed. And now to introduce our guest tonight, I will ask uh, Mirna Ayad to, uh, uh, to speak. And uh, Mirna, are you ready? I'm starting your video. Mirna, would you start your video? For some reason, there is an issue with Mirna's video, but I suppose we can uh, we can start uh, with Hana Malalla. So Hana Malalla really needs no introduction. Uh, an artist who has uh, practiced for uh, the past uh, 20, uh, 30 years almost. Uh, she has, again, worked under uh, a number of artists, exhibited uh, internationally. We are proud uh, to have her work in the Barjil Art uh, Foundation uh, collection. Um, we, uh, we have also followed her, not only her artistic uh, output, but also her intellectual output. It's very, very, really rare to come across someone who brings together all these uh, elements, the element of being an artist, an intellectual, a leading cultural figure in the Middle East. Uh, Hana Malalla uh, was, was born in Iraq and studied in Iraq and spent a lot of time in Iraq. Uh, even after uh, the, uh, the 2003 war, she was amongst the, uh, the, the number of artists who had spent time in Iraq and really experienced uh, a lot of the, the, the turmoil that the country had gone through and a lot of it is reflected in her art. Today, Hana will be speaking about her practice, but also her friendship and her uh, relationship uh, as, a, uh, as a student uh, and as a friend, of course, of Shakir Hassan Al Saeed. Shakir Hassan Al Saeed, of course, is one of the leading intellectuals, uh, the, one of the co-founders uh, co of the Baghdad uh, Modern Art Group in 1951, and one of the leading intellectuals of the second half of the 20th century anywhere, I think, in the world, not just in the Arab world. So, Hana, thank you so much for joining us tonight from Bahrain. Uh, I will be uh, sharing my screen, if that's uh, okay with you. Um, oh, Mirna, would you like, I just saw you turn on a video. Okay, let's try to get Mirna here. Mirna, can you unmute? Okay, this is the new Zoom issue, which I'm having. Bye. Uh, Hana, I'm going to share. I'm going to I'm going to share my screen now, and I'm going to hand over control of the uh, remote to you, and then you can control my screen, and uh, and start your presentation. Yeah. Like, actually, let me just let me just do it from here. Share screen. Remote control, Hana. Yeah, thank you. Uh, hi, everyone who joined us in this uh, meeting, which I call it uh, air meeting. Uh, as there is no uh, definite place uh, and time, it is really timeless, uh, placeless. So it is like it is our future uh, recipe. And uh, thanks, Sultan, to invite me for this session, uh, Majlis session talk. And Sultan suggested to uh, divide my talk between my art practice and uh, my experience with uh, Shakir Hassan Al Said, which I find it difficult uh, to, uh, to divide a practice of 35 years and the rest 
to uh, and, uh, and introduce it just in 30 minutes. So, uh, however, what I will do here, I am trying to do here, to define four points, uh, uh, points between these two practices. Uh, first one, uh, uh, numbers, arcology, ecology, and uh, uh, invisible world. And I am going to first, in a, uh, uh, through my, my practice, and then uh, my experience with Shaker. Then I leave uh, that for you to find the link between these two practices. First, uh, in the screen, this is my, uh, my artwork, depicts my uh, form arm, left form arm, with my numerical signature. Uh, 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 and uh, I had this numerical signature uh, tattooed in my hand uh, from, 19, uh, from 2013. Here, I consider my, uh, my arm as an art material or found object. And I uh, just would like to brief you. Um, just to go to second slide. Yeah, I just would like, uh, I just would like to brief you about the, uh, new, that numerical uh, codification where it comes from. Uh, since leaving Iraq in, uh, 2000, in November 2006, and uh, I have developed this new, a numerical signature uh, 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 based on abjad system, in which each number uh, corresponds to one Arabic letter. Traditionally, the abjad system uh, allows uh, letters and words to be analyzed uh, as if they were number. And here in the screen, you can see the basic uh, chart with the three columns. And you can see here it is the, the letter. Uh, and it's, uh, uh, it's equivalent uh, of numbers. Uh, the first person introduced me uh, to, uh, to, to introduce me to abjad system and uh, mentored me on its significance and uses was Shakar Hassan Al Said. Shakar Hassan Al Said himself used this uh, system in his own artwork. But I was um, uh, researched this deeply through through my MA, which is about uh, which was about semiotic. And then my PhD, which was about um, about uh, logic, and uh, the second route. Let me go to a second slide. The the second uh, route of this numerical signature uh, is um, our, is archival uh, code on the body of artifacts in archaeological museum at any archaeological museum. But but for me specifically. Uh, archaeological Museum first, which I researched in Baghdad, then, uh, 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 and especially the Sumerian artifacts, and then at the British Museum, uh, and as well, especially the um, Mesopotamia sections. And, uh, uh, and uh, not this one, I think, I think there's something missing, actually. Let me go to here. Uh, from my uh, uh, old uh, practice in Iraq uh, from 90s, I, I, I choose just one artwork, uh, this one. Uh, big, uh, and this artwork was executed in Baghdad in 90s and is a very good example, uh, example to show you the two pillars uh, of my art practice in that time. First, mathematics and second, uh, archaeology. Uh, the work constructed uh, of tessellation of uh, numbers of uh, of square. This square in special si in specific si uh, size size um, uh, uh, five by five centimeters, filling a specific size of uh, canvas. And from first gaze on this uh, uh, artwork, you can uh, you can see uh, there is shape in the center of the work, and this uh, this shape it is with the specific number of uh, of squares, and this shape actually resembling uh, the royal uh, royal game of Ur. And let me show you. Uh, I mean. Here it is, a royal game of Ur, and this, uh, this uh, I devoted uh, one uh, big um, 
paragraph in my MA, which is about semiotic, to study uh, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, Ur, uh, royal, uh, royal game of Ur, uh, semiotically. I will not go deep in this because it needs a really long time to speak about it. So I will move to the other, uh, to other, uh, to other artwork. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, I, as I said, I left Iraq in, two, in November 2006, and then I reached London in, 2000, in 2007. And leaving Baghdad, uh, it was both my choice and for, uh, and for indeed necessity. And reaching, reaching London actually in 2007, uh, with, my, with my belief of my uh, stability as an artist, as established artist. But this belief really uh, in, uh, has been replaced with the big doubt uh, first, about my artistic uh, art uh, history as an artist, and all my belief in my identity, and uh, I, I, I and started to find my, myself uh, in uh, in turning point in London, uh, in this big hub uh, of uh, of art, and really I start uh, to uh, I have big awareness about how difficult it is to be an Arab artist and practice your art in, uh, in the West, uh, and especially for women. And uh, then I found myself uh, in this dilemma, uh, and uh, there is with the three options. One, accept the challenge and the start from scratch, I mean to forget all my artistic history, or leave the art and do anything else, or third option, develop nostalgic to our original home and keep doing the same kind of art which I used to, doing in, to do it in Iraq. I know it is, uh, and I suppose, uh, it is uh, to be nostalgic, uh, it is a relation uh, to all of uh, uh, all. Uh, to all uh, of us once we uh, once we born, but in the art it is different. So and the, the other thing which I found it in and this is completely my discovery and maybe I am wrong. I find the Arab artists who live uh, in the West either they are uh, um, nostalgic or traumatized. The Arab artists who left their country in 60s, 70s, 80s, uh, and even 90s, they have big nostalgia to their uh, time in their country. The artists who left their country uh, after 9-11, like myself, they are traumatized. So uh, here it is, I, I found myself um, in this dilemma, and then, uh, and as I said, it is it was turning point, and in this time, uh, I found myself in state, and I, I I have to say here, I risk uh, I did risk my uh, status as a refugee in that time, and I risk my fellowship with the School of Oriental and African Studies, uh, SAWAS, uh, and because I don't keep, uh, I don't, uh, I, I didn't keep working with this, uh, uh, with this um, fellowship, and I kept myself in the studio, at the studio, uh, at my studio in London, and hang around London uh, to see galleries and the museum to catch up what I lost over 35 years of assimilation in Iraq. Uh, here I would just would like, uh, so I, this is, there is uh, two uh, artwork was ex executed in that time uh, in London. Uh, first two artwork uh, in this uh, very chaotic and uh, unstable time. Uh, Baghdad map and uh, my country map. This is in the screen my country map executed between 2007 and 2008. Uh, this work exhibited widely and the most recently at the Imperial War Museum in London in between 2018 and 19 and it is in the private collection. So here um, you can see in this uh, borderless map 
uh, actually this is chaotic of um, uh, which is reflect uh, reflect my uh, my situation in that time and you can see this map it is not uh, by uh, bird eye view uh, and one can say it's by human view and here it is you can see is that the cities uh, situate, uh, situated or pos uh, positioned uh, randomly so here it, uh, in, in the and you can see in the north this is Najib, which uh, should be in the south so i shifted from uh, from south to 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 north and i replace uh, shift Mosul or re uh, move Mosul from uh, uh, from uh, east to west. Uh, to west. Uh, uh, as you know, after uh, 2003 uh, invasion, designated safe uh, green zone and unsafe red zone uh, were established. As uh, you can see in this red cloth, which is copy of uh, of um, bus map, Baghdad bus map, and this is uh, symbolize uh, cities in the west of Iraq which have uh, experienced ex extreme violence, and there is a fragment in the in the left side, small fragment of green. Uh, appears there, inspired by uh, color, uh, uh, talisman, uh, a tribe used by pilgrims uh, seeking protection in a shrine. And as you know, this is near Najaf, and Najaf is this holy city in Iraq. So here it is, and there is many layer of politics, of religious here in this world. So this is, I choose this artwork, which is, it is like, I don't know if it is, I, I nostalgic or traumatized. This is the first artwork executed in London after I left Iraq, because I said, as I said, I left Iraq in the end of 2006, in the, in the peak of violence in Iraq. Uh, so it, it, this is what stuck in my eyes. So. Uh, uh, yes. May I interrupt briefly? Um, I understand that these fragments that you use are burnt, um, maybe burnt textile. Is that in any way a reflection of the status of the country or the region that you use burnt fragments? Yeah, yes, yes. That is why it is. I use this. Um, uh, uh, I use this um, uh, this technique, burn burn canvas. So I, this is the border. Actually, it is not not a drawing. It is a from uh, burning calico canvas and layer it. Uh, this is many layers, like five, uh, five layers of canvas, and this is uh, this the border between cities. It is just random, like a fragment. It is reflecting the destruction and chaotic of the country uh, 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 as a sequence of war and violence in that time. Yeah. So let me move to other, uh, I think other slide. Yes. Uh, I mean, uh, this is slide. Uh, this is the last artwork in 2016. I put it here because reflect, uh, let me go to, to, uh, to, uh, previous slide. I mean, in the, in the same time, uh, between 2006 and 2007, uh, ruins technique was coined by myself, which is reflect on uh, my technique in that time. I will not go through it. Uh, it, uh, it is in my website, so you can read it. I will go to other artwork to explain it. Here it is a uh, zoom uh, of, uh, of um, uh, six meter uh, wall installation. This is last artwork executed in London before I left to Bahrain first time in 2016. And here, here it is, you can see uh, in this work, uh, the, the viewer could perceive the action of destroying burning material without any road trick or any story. Here I reach I mean, just I would like to the material to say what would like to say to through the fire, and uh, there are many prisons in this work, uh, and when a natural daylight across uh, the prisons, colorful spectrum will be alive. So here it is, and uh, this work. Uh, contain uh, its aesthetic decision with the, uh, within their 
when there is the right environment. I would like to say here, this is really an um, example about a uh, link to, um, uh, to the title of this talk, Materiality and uh, the Invisible. I, I mean materiality, uh, uh, it is not material actually, materiality I mean it is medium, uh, substance and service. And here, uh, as I said, uh, this is artwork. It is my experience to leave, uh, to, to leave the material to uh, create its aesthetic uh, through action. So here it is burning uh, action in, a, in organic material, uh, calico, and there is the glass, uh, the glass uh, prism, uh, which is uh, reflect the light, which is actually white. But once uh, across the prism become a uh, like rainbow with the colorful spectrum. So here it is, and ephemeral. So if there is no light, that means all the work, there is like 20 prism in this uh, six meter installation, wall installation. Uh, if there is no light, that means completely the, the, self, the, surf, the surface um, barren. So this is, uh, this is, I mean, for me, this is um, the perfect example of ruins technique, uh, which I moved uh, now in, in my practice, it, it take a different aspect. So let me move to other slide. And uh, this is slide, uh, I mean, this is, I put this artwork uh, uh, because it is first artwork executed online. This is a floor uh, installation of biohazard uh, uh, sign, uh, dusted in the second floor of a very toxic exploded uh, building in Baghdad in, uh, 19, uh, in 2016. I used here, uh, this is, uh, as said, online uh, artwork uh, because I was in between London and Bahrain and I asked my friend to execute it in this toxic building uh, by specific pigment, uh, which is toxic pigment, and we choose this powder, which is e e easily blowing by, by air, by wind, and uh, a very fragile artwork. Uh, could be uh, uh, easily uh, vanished by time. And uh, this is we, uh, this work exhibited just uh, three hours. And then after that, uh, we left it there and we have just the video of the work and we have this photograph. And uh, really I am uh, I'm fortunate because the camera there is that the, if you see in the left uh, corner in the bottom, uh, the camera, uh, there is the, um, the date of, uh, uh, of uh, exhibiting this work. It is two, uh, 2016 on the, f uh, uh, on the 5th of um, September. So here it is, uh, this is the last work and maybe I will move to, uh, the, I have to go through this uh, uh, last artwork and then I move to Shakir, uh, uh, my experience with Shakir. This is last artwork ex uh, executed in London and last artwork exhibited in London before I left again to Bahrain in uh, 2019 and this work wa uh, was exhibited uh, at MoMA. And this is about, uh, the title of this work, uh, she, he, uh, she, he has no picture. Uh, and this is, uh, uh, this work uh, constructed of, of uh, many portraits of victims. And the technique, it is for me, this artwork reflects uh, uh, the development, development of ruins technique. And in this work, all portrait uh, uh, was, each portrait was built by accumulation of burning canvas. Uh, so it, in the end, it looks like um, a low relief or soft sculpture. And in between them, uh, if you can see here is the ochre, which is actually this plate. Uh, 
uh, brass, uh, metal plate, a golden one, and there is a, there is a writing here, there. It is Laysa Ladehasura. She has no picture and or he has no picture and this uh, work as a mirror reflecting the viewer so the viewer uh, could uh, see their self in the in this uh, in this uh, brass and uh, and this to to tell them you could be one of them of the victim and i will uh, i have one um, uh, one zoom artwork here it is one of them just to show you the technique it is completely uh, there is no pigment no paint in the, this uh, portrait it is just about accumulation of burning campus to create this portrait. And this really linked to concept of the work. All this victim was incinerated to death by fire in, the, in this shelter, in, in Al Amriya shelter in 1991. During this war, when I was in, in, in Iraq, in, in Baghdad in that time, and I went to, to visit the shelter with my friend, Lutfiya Dilaymi. Uh, after three months, and still the smell of shelter uh, of victim uh, there. So let us move from this. And I would uh, this is this the artwork which link uh, my, uh, link uh, I mean link the talk to Shakir because I moved to Sha my experience with Shakir. This work uh, 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 from when I was age eighteen. Uh, I was a student um, uh, under uh, uh, two great uh, artists, uh, Rafa and Nasri, who taught me uh, printmaking, and then Shakir Hassan Al Said, uh, he taught uh, me uh, uh, art history. And this artwork very important for me, not because it's very early artwork, uh, artwork, but because first artwork uh, accepted by these two great artists, Iraqi artists, and they exhibited in their room in, uh, in, uh, in uh, an institution of fine art in Baghdad. And that gave me some establishment. And here it is, you know, in the age of, um, of 18, it looks a bit uh, rebellious uh, artwork. So, uh, 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 as I said, uh, there is two teacher, uh, two teacher, great teacher, uh, and I fortunate in that, uh, Rafa Al Nasri and Shakir Hassan Al Said. And Shakir Hassan Al Said, he's not just teacher; he taught me um, uh, art history. It is long relationship which, which cover like more than 30 years. So I am really, I would like to speak about him, like his method in teaching, jump from one topic to other topic, from one uh, uh, talk to other talk. He is like this all time. So I will follow his method to speak about him really. I will do it like himself, cutting here, cutting here, and just speak randomly, I, I call it, it is how to intertwine uh, madness and genius. So sometimes you look at it, it looks like uh, mad, and sometimes you find it, it is very genius. So I am really privileged to call Shakar Hassan Al Said my mentor, teacher, and friend. Uh, it, uh, it has been, and not it, wa it, it, it was, and I will let you know why it has been a unique uh, relationship not it was so and i i would like here just to to tell you a specific sentence which uh, had resonated uh, on my head for for a long time it is shakar hassan al said uh, told his student he said the great the best student who be, beat defeat and uh, frustrate their teacher so here he said, if you are really great student and best student, you have to beat me, defeat me, and make me frustrated. And this is really resonate in my hand. And this give us uh, confidence to challenge him and to speak freely with him.
and this is how he gave us a uh, uh, conf uh, confident and he as i said he taught us not in academic way but in a cre in a creative he has his room we uh, uh, title it uh, shakir hassan room uh, and uh, uh, in an uh, in institution of fine art. I, when I met him, I was between 14, 15, and he was in his 48, but he looks much, much older than, than his age. And I think maybe that because of his uh, lifestyle or because of weight of his thought. All students, all of us, uh, we were all uh, instantly uh, captivated by his method of teaching. Of teaching, uh, as I said, I follow his method uh, in in this uh, in this uh, session. So I will jump to uh, this artwork of him, and uh, I mean from 1997, uh, Shakir he has ambition to leave. Uh, the wall artwork and create some artwork different than this. And this is, um, I don't know how can I categorize this artwork. I, uh, I can I say it, uh, I say it is a street installation. Uh, he explained it to me. Uh, I was with him in 1994. And then when I returned to Baghdad, this just let me let me find the picture. This um, I think uh, this uh, the title of this work uh, in Arabic and in his uh, hand here it is the picture. He wrote it is Kushk Amman et Taswiri and Atilqai Kushk Amman Tilqai. I translated to spontaneous Amman street wood. This uh, this is small um, shop or booth in Al Abdali Square in Amman, and when I uh, when returned to Baghdad and Shakir uh, as well returned to Baghdad, he asked me to travel and take my camera. And that uh, in that time we are really in very hardship of sanction because uh, we were very hard sanction in Iraq, and we have no uh, I mean even we have no paper to print of the, uh, the film of camera. So I went to Amman uh, and he, uh, he paid me to travel. So he paid me all the expensive or, or expenses of the travel. And this is, it was great in that time because I said we live under sanction. And uh, before he showed me this uh, shop and this shop, he showed me inside and outside and it is, looks his work. Actually, it looks one artwork of Shakir. So, and, uh, and uh, uh, thanks to God, I, I, when I returned back, I gave him all the picture and ha he gave me two of this to keep it with me. And I don't know where is the others, maybe with his uh, family. So uh, here it is. And I found this artwork uh, of Shakir, it is very late in his practice, should be happened 30, year, uh, 30 years earlier than this. So uh, anyway, I will go to other picture. I choose, um, I mean, as I said, uh, there is many points uh, uh, in this uh, join my art practice and my experience with Shakir, one of them, archaeology. Shakir, Shakir Hassan Al Said, uh, he had big passion uh, to archaeologic, uh, archaeology uh, and especially about archaeological museum in Baghdad, which is very close to uh, an institution of fine art. And he, he, uh, we, he uh, took us regularly to this museum. And here is Shakir uh, in Louvre, uh, in the front uh, Siberian cabinet, and uh, he wrote, and he gave me this uh, photograph, and you can see in the left side the back of photograph. He said to my spiritual uh, student and daughter Hannah, with uh, love and respect, 1996. And uh, the significance of this picture, it is it was took in 1958, which is my uh, my year, uh, my birth year. 
So here it is, I found it is like wufuq. It is something, I mean, I mean, something there's in the air and this uh, relationship between uh, teacher and the student. Let me go to other slide. This is the re really important slide. Shakir uh, established um, a group uh, titled, uh, he, ta he gave title of this group, um, uh, a group of aesthetic studies. And like, uh, like this majlis, uh, he, we, uh, we had a meeting, uh, every uh, Tuesday in uh, Saddam Art Center and uh, where there is lecture each week and uh, uh, Shakir uh, gave, uh, gave lecture, uh, one lecture a month and the others three weeks for other guests. I did many lecture in this um, uh, aesthetic studies group and you can see here in the picture the group where Shakar here and there is uh, there is a, a lot of um, uh, Iraqi people they are critic writer big writer novelist uh, poets and uh, artist uh, and his daughter with us as well and it is like this session majlis uh, majlis it is uh, every Wednesday yes but this is uh, was uh, every a Tuesday, and uh, we uh, we establish a small uh, public publication uh, and very poor paper in that time because this is in nineteen between nineteen ninety five and nineteen ninety seven. And uh, the, we call the magazine Al Wasati. Uh, I wrote regularly in this uh, magazine. Uh, this is um, uh, about this. Uh, um, aesthetic study uh, uh, group and then Shakir as well wrote re regularly in this magazine and I was one editor of this magazine. Uh, let us uh, move to other slide. Here it is, this is the last slide uh, of 2001 when Shakir was uh, severely ill and this, uh, this uh, picture, maybe you know Shakir never uh, shake uh, hand with the women and uh, even myself and this is the first time and last time he shake my hand it is like farewell and this is in his uh, retrospective exhibition in at uh, Athar Gallery uh, in Baghdad and you can see here here in the left side Muhammad Ghani Hikmet and here it is in the middle between Shakir and myself, um, a critic, Adil Kamil, and the other staff who are uh, a teacher of uh, College of Art in Baghdad. And this is last time uh, I saw Shakir, as I said, and uh, that is because after that he, he uh, did isolate himself uh, at his home because he was very ill. Let me move to other slide. Here, as I, as I said from the beginning, I said it, it, it has been a, a unique uh, relationship, not it, uh, it was, because now uh, I found my, myself completely isolated and in very peaceful time. Uh, in Bahrain, so I can, uh, because I teach from home, so, uh, and in the, my flat uh, really in the desert. So I just uh, concentrate uh, to read, uh, to reread Shakir Hassan uh, Al Said uh, letters, which is uh, 20 letters. What I found in, le in the letter, it is really, uh, it is complicated. Uh, it is really uh, timely and all his thought in the letter. And I discovered something. We are team now, it translate this letter, we are team of three. It translate this letter from Arabic to English because we, uh, we have, uh, we, and we work without any support, just with our passion to translate it until we finish it and then we publish it. And I found, if um, I found, I, and allow me to read just two uh, paragraphs um, of them, 
It is just I would like to reduce this curve. Dr. Hana, uh, if I yes. may interrupt briefly, these are letters that Ustaz Shakir Hassan Saeed sent to you in the 1990s, and you're only translating them now, is that correct? Yes, yes, it is. Uh, he, sent, yeah, he sent this letter between 1995 and 1997 when he was in Amman as a consulate in uh, Shoman in Institution. Uh, foundation. So just let me read and I will let you know why I, I need to read this. It is like poem. So here, uh, just let me read it. Uh, here it is. Uh, or as if I truly understand, like any geographer, that the river in its fellow has two shores. The first exposed to a region and the second to sedimentation. What foothill or river ban hide us then? I'm, I'm truly lost. What I would like to say here, I mean, I, I know, or maybe you know, the most important theory of Shakar al Wahid al-Wahid, one dimension. But nobody knows. For me, the most important, and I really now, when I catch it in the, again, because of the letter remind me, when I catch it from the letter, actually his theory about al-tarakum wa ta'riya, erosion and sediment, sedimentation, or say erosion or accumulation. It is linked first to his, uh, uh, I mean, his concept uh, about archeology, span his concept about ecology and about all his technique of from 1970s until he died. Because if you dig down on this, his theory about erosion and sediment, sedimentation, it means with the, his technique, with the material, to move the material from one side and accumulate it in the other side until he do hello in some artwork, which is God without, with the air, nothing there, with the just a space. So here it is, this his theory, actually the practical theory linked to all his techniques. And this is when I read again the letter, and I just remind, because I just remind me about the, the, my dialogue with him uh, before, and said, he, he, he kept saying, uh, about his technique, and this is his technique. The other, just uh, I would like to read the other one, and I will let you know why I read this. This uh, as well, I choose it from his letter. We can only uh, converse with the all being if we rid ourselves of our delusions and for own sake face the self that appears before us. It give us the taste of our defeat. How, el uh, how else could I better explain it than in this expression? I mean, in this, in, in many letters, uh, and uh, he, uh, Shakar, concentrate and, uh, and kept saying uh, uh, and explained the relation between humanity and nature between humanity and the creatures. And suddenly, uh, and just, um, I, I, I came across uh, when I read, uh, let me go, where shall I go to other slide? لازم نخلص بعد خمس دقائق على فكرة. Ah, okay. Okay, yeah, to, uh, just to other slide. I mean, uh, uh, if I just, I came across, um, uh, uh, came across uh, a new uh, issue of uh, Art Forum magazine, and I found one artist uh, spoke about pandemic, which is, uh, uh, this is a new issue. He spoke about, uh, uh, about relation between nature and humanity and the creatures, and he said, this is just a new from uh, Art Forum. 
uh, a new understanding of community uh, will all living creature. So I found really uh, Shakir uh, 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 letters is very timely and just uh, give me <laughs> give me two minutes just to to read my uh, answer to uh, just this small uh, answer to one uh, letter of him because link to this um, uh, this issue about the humanity and the creature professor shakar yes we are fake when we are with the people but in uh, identifying with the other creatures and trying to communicate with the other being using the one being that we have then maybe the fakeness vanishes in this uh, cosmic sense that one is merely uh, a being in uh, the society of creatures the isolation uh, imposed upon me has helped me to uh, uh, understand the lessons you have uh, you have been uh, giving me over these letters so here it is let me check if i have other slide or not that's it. I, I, I mean, just one second. Uh, I mean, when I saw, um, when I saw in 2012, uh, Martin Creed interview in MCA, uh, I just shocker uh, jumped to my mind because uh, Martin Creed uh, talk, it is an inter intertwined between madness and genius and you can check it online. That's, thank you so much. And that's all. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Hana. Uh, it's uh, really uh, fascinating. I couldn't interrupt you. I usually like to interrupt people, but, but it's very difficult because everything you said is so interesting. Uh, Dr. Uh, I have a comment here from, um, from uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Nada Shabud, uh, who says, um, Hana's work negotiates her generation's aspiration and struggles. Visually and intellectually, her work protests the pioneers and earlier generations and tries to reinvent her relationship with her country, Iraq. And I think this is something that uh, we have witnessed through, through, your, uh, through your presentation. I, I want to just make one thing clear to everybody that you did not immediately respond to Shakir Hassan's letters. You sat on them, you waited, you let them sort of um, simmer, and, and then about 15, 20 years later, is that the case that you decided that you have the ability to reply to your teacher? Is that correct? Uh, yes, correct. But, but the, some letters, I start to answer them uh, in 2004 when he died. And then I, some letter, I answer him when I was in Paris. And some letter, I answer him when I was in Bahrain. And London, and then some letters. So I write in London, and actually there is something I don't like to reveal it now. Each letter, there is a situation which is really just surprised me. When I was in Paris, I read and answered one letter, which is he spoke in this letter about his madness in Paris when he was a student. So here it is, the, I mean, that is why I said um, uh, Shakir uh, still, even he left physically, uh, still uh, there is something, uh, I mean, his spirit uh, still with, uh, with us, yeah. Maybe the other question, and I invite everybody, please do submit any questions you have, but another thing I wanted to ask is there seems to be some kind of connection here between isolation and between uh, some of the artistic production that you have come across. Um, uh, in, in some cases, you said that Iraqi artists were isolated, of course, under uh, horrible conditions, really, the, the, the sanctions that the, was imposed on Iraq. But then some artists went voluntarily into isolation, even when they left. Do you see that this is something that is intrinsic to some artists in, in Iraq or in the region? What do you mean? Yeah, you mean the artists inside Iraq isolated in, uh, during well, isolated time? Isolated in Iraq, but then some of them chose to be isolated even when they left. Uh, yeah, the, that is what I said. I mean, even the uh, the artists, uh, when I said, uh, as I said, when we, we were isolated, we live in the bubble, uh, and then because we we haven't we have we hadn't any connected uh, connect uh, connection with the uh, uh, with the world. But some artists they left. Even they left. They uh, they start to produce the same, and it's like it is. They are isolated from the. 
uh, from environment around them, our surrounding in the West. And this really surprised me. And uh, as I said, I, I, I categorized this when I faced it um, practically when I, uh, I, I left to, uh, to London, to West. Yeah. Um, so I have a question from uh, a, an art consultant, um, uh, Louisa McMillan, who says, how difficult has it been to translate Shaker's complicated art theory into another language? Is there a connection between his philosophical ideas and the Arabic language? Uh, yeah, it is very difficult, but I am really fortunate where I have uh, I have a friend who is really great at translating. <laughs> he is with us. I don't like to reveal his name. And uh, I uh, he translated it from Arabic and I sit with him, explain to him, and we spend in true sky we keep, uh, keep um, uh, explain uh, Shakir complicated sentence because Shakir, even in Arabic, it is very complicated sentence and he cut a grammar, a, a grammar uh, uh, and his grammar, it is not uh, correct even in Arabic. So he cut sentence and jump to other idea and you have to link it in the end. For me, it is very clear very clear because I know even it's very clear when I start to read it again, I found it, there's some difficulties, but I, I'm really a spoke and uh, with the, I speak with the, the translator and uh, keep trying to, uh, to find the language of Shakir in English. Um, Rula is asking, uh, was he influenced, was Shakir influenced by any Sufi tradition? And if so, was there a specific Sufi master that he was influenced by? Uh, I mean, in his uh, in his letters, it is uh, there is there is a lot of names. And I saw his uh, his uh, library, uh, and he gave me a lot of books. It is many of them. So uh, Ibn Arabi, Al Hallaj, Qabib Al Ban, Farid Al Din Al It is in his letter or the name there. And you can go through them, and uh, and uh, Ibn Arabi and all of all of them. So it is, I mean, a uh, So it is not a specific, uh, a specific uh, one of them. Yeah. Um, if I may ask, you said something along the lines. I wrote it down. You said artists who left the region are either traumatized or nostalgic. <laughs> Can you elaborate on this? Yeah, I mean, of course, yeah, I mean, uh, I found the artists when I, I reached London, <laughs> I found them really nostalgic to their golden time in Iraq. And this is specifically the artists who left Iraq in golden time in 60s, 70s, 80s. And then we, of course, in the 90s, we lived really a very horrible time in Iraq and very hardship of sanction and war two wars, international wars. And then of course our time, it is not a golden time. So when after that 9-11, so when we left, we hold with this is trauma with us to the West. So I found it really that the artists from their production, the artists who left the region and went to the West after 9-11, really they reflect the dress trauma. And the, art, the other artists, they reflect the golden time or very good time in, in Iraq, a traditional time, and I found it in their product. Yeah. Uh, I have uh, Mirna Ayad, uh, who was supposed to speak earlier, but it's, I am sure it's 100% my fault, Mirna, that I couldn't unmute you. I La wala. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, Sultan, first of all, thank you so much. I really apologize to you and everybody, and especially to Hana. Um, I mean, I had a fight with my phone and my laptop and my husband, so <laughs> I'm glad that, that we're online now. Um, I heard just tidbits and a lot of robotic uh, speak. Um, Hannah, I, it's so nice to, to, to see you and, and to, to have listened. I, I caught a few of uh, a bit of the conversation. Um, I know we spoke a lot about Shakir, but I wanted to circle back to Hannah actually. Um, and I wanted to say, um, after I spoke to her and, you know, we had, we had such a delightful uh, conversation on the phone, um, I feel like you are a portal to Shakir and Shakir is a portal to you uh, as well. Um, I don't think we could have possibly understood him um, without you. And I don't think we could <laughs> understand you without understanding him. I think you are some sort of kindred spirits. 
Um, but the truth is, um, I'd like to just quickly paint a portrait of Hana. Hana was a rebel, you know, through and through. Uh, this is a young lady in 1960s, 1970s Iraq who defied all convention and simply wanted to know, simply wanted to learn. And um, she had the support of her parents because she earned it. Um, she, she discovered that the way to do that is to become independent. So she worked, you know, in her teens, she, she made money and um, she was, you know, respected. Um, she didn't listen to anyone. She had her own, you know, ideas. She had her own beliefs. I, I think it was the start of a path of, of an unknown. And then she met the biggest enigma that there was, which was Shakir. But had she not been curious and rebellious and, you know, really, really observant, I don't think um, we would know everything that we know about her and Shakir today. Um, through her art and through her, you know, her, her writings and her teachings, we know that this is a combination of being Iraqi, being Arab, heritage, identity, uh, Sufism, um, I don't know, uh, nationalism, uh, Arabism, so many things, so many isms uh, in her work. And we can only say thank you really, really to that. So thank you so much. No, no, thank you for you. <laughs> thank you so much. Habibti. Thank you, Mirna. I'm glad you spoke. Uh, I have uh, Ali Yas uh, who wanted to speak. Uh, Ali, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Sultan. Thank you, Hana. Thank you, everyone. Um, just a small uh, comment about uh, Shaka and so on. Like, I have the privilege to work on the archive of Darat al-Funun in Amman for the last uh, documenting and uh, digitalize the 30 years of modern and Arab art. And for me, it was uh, what helped me to understand and to have that entrance to Shaka and so on. It, like, it was his relies on all this Sufism background and for example he used a lot of that terms which is really familiar for someone who's on that language or the, on that heritage so I found it the, most of time the lack happened when people coming as final product especially with the scholars and so on you know he's come they coming ah this is Shaka and so on so not going from the grassroots and going or the growing with him that's um, that's the comment uh, the thing question for Hannah uh, it's about how you see the Iraqi artists at moment. And, and what I meant about at moment, it's the artist or the, the art who producing during the uprising during the October revolution since last October. And yeah, that's it. Thank you. You mean Iraqi artists inside Iraq? Inside and outside. I mean, this generation who they are facing the corruption, the system who they are fed up with everything. With, with, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, if it is about, I mean, really surprise me, uh, still inside Iraq with all this uh, 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 terrible life, they, st uh, they still produce very good art. I don't, I don't like to say very good art. There is some sense reflect their situation uh, uh, in Iraq. Outside, uh, outside. I mean, it is complicated, um, uh, complicated is issue uh, to uh, to. I mean, to categorize the artist outside Iraq and to be Iraqi or not, to be international or not. This is big, uh, big, big question. And so, and in this time, uh, definitely there is very new generation which is I respect and I love their work. And there is something really, really promising. So, um, uh, I mean, uh, and uh, when I went to Iraq in 2000, in December 2018, I really found a lot of really good artists in there. And surprised me because now, it, uh, because internet and because this, um, this life, they and you know because uh, the the uh, I mean the contemporary art it is different now from to be artist uh, a contemporary artist allowed you to do many style of artwork so um, there is uh, I mean street artwork uh, graffiti uh, installation videos even use just documentation so I found this is a, they understand I, they catch with the everything and uh, I think it, uh, this need. I mean, this, this really needs a big research. 
So I found really, I mean, there is something need research, not just, uh, I mean, talk, I mean, not just a quick talk. Dr. Hana, before we uh, before we close this hour, I just wanted to say that uh, the slides that you showed, one of the slides that resonated with the viewers, I think, was the slide that you, the work that you showed at uh, the MoMA, uh, an iteration of the missing individuals, Amriya, the tragic moment in Iraqi history, and another one, of course, was a uh, the the burnt canvas that you also showed. Um, a lot of people here on the chat were, were commenting and were thanking you for this work as well. I think what, the last thing I would say is, um, you know, what, what are your aspirations? I wanted to maybe move to a positive uh, end. What are your aspirations going forward? What would you like to see? How, how can we help you? What could we do? Uh, tell us. We are at yeah. your I mean, I mean, I, 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 I mean, I, I'm isolated here, but I, I love. I, this is my choice, and uh, I mean, this pandemic really is there is the positive side of it. <laughs> this one, and I work really. I love research. I love to read, and I love to be isolated and just look from the window. So I think I don't need any help. <laughs> I I just really need help from my spirit, and then I work. I really happy when I found I catch something in my research. I research now. I have research uh, two research. One of them part of it the phase uh, first phase of it at Sawas School uh, at Sawas Brunei Gallery, and it is long term uh, research about archaeological site. Uh, in Iraq, and the other one, which is really uh, give me hope, uh, it is there is the book of um, Roland Bart uh, about uh, camera, uh, camera Lucida, which is stuck in my uh, eyes, uh, in my in my brain. And uh, when I took the uh, last picture of my mom, there is some wrong in the in the camera, so the picture come with the, as a ghost. Uh, and then I found it. That this is really invisible. So I am my. I now researching the invisible world through the camera, very advanced camera, which can catch uh, something which is uh, the naked uh, eyes of a human uh, couldn't. So I am. I'm really. I don't need any help. I need help by myself. <laughs> Dr. Hana, uh, I am so grateful and on behalf of everybody who was here. Thank you so much for the work you do. Thank, thank you so much, you so much for, uh, for documenting your, uh, your, your friendship and your uh, mentorship under Shakir Hassan Saeed, one of the greatest thinkers of, I think, my time. Some of the people here are born after he passed away, maybe. But of my time, uh, one of the greatest um, artists as well. And you, are, you yourself are such a towering figure in our world today. Thank you thank so you much. So We're very proud that your work is on display here in the Sharjah Art Museum. Um, everybody else, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, join us on Saturday. We have uh, Mohammed Shahid who will be speaking from California. It will be very, very early where he is. And he'll be talking about architecture outside Cairo. So it's not the usual Cairo architecture talk. He'll be talking about Ismailia, Alexandria, Mahalla, uh, and elsewhere around Egypt. Thank you so much, Doctora. Thank you, everybody, for joining Thank us. Thank you so much. Thank you for you. Thank you so much. Night. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.